Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petiti Garden Centers and I'm here with my co-worker Jason. Hello. And he has let us come and experiment and play in his raised vegetable garden that he produced this year and it has been it's been really, really fun. It's it's been really cool. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> cool. Thank you for letting us be here. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so um, today we are putting the garden to bed, and um, so Jason, you'll see Jason and I kind of taking you through those steps. Um, it is a fall day. You can see the fall colors around us. Mm -hmm. Lots of leaves on the ground. Um, it's a little moist. It's wet. It's <laughs> um, muddy. It's slippery. It's yeah, wet. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the ideal time. If you can, if you can find a drier day to do this, that's a little bit better as far as avoiding soil compaction. But we had to get out here and do this. So, um, needless to say, we're out there. First thing we did is we pulled the peppers out of mm -hmm. Jason's bed, and you can tell some of the peppers that he was growing are still blooming. We have not received um, any frost yet. Um, there have been light dustings here and there, but really in your garden, we you haven't, haven't gotten any, any frosts yet this year. Yeah, and we're we're almost at Halloween, just to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really good. Yeah, and you had a great pepper harvest. This, oh, it was this bed was really nice. This was my this bed here was I affectionately call my pepper bed. Uh, we did sweet peppers, hot peppers, um, this little beauty, which is a not as hot as a jalapeno. All the plants performed uh, very, very well. Yeah. Um, very good yields. I couldn't be happier. Yeah, and Taylor will show you pictures of the root systems on the peppers, and they all developed really nicely. And I wanted to show you as well um, kind of the thickness and the stemming on a non grafted pepper versus a grafted pepper. And you'll see this little white marker that's kind of the graft point, if you will. But look at how thick the grafted peppers grow. It's like a a tree trunk yeah and then they develop you know really full branching mm -hmm. as well but you know this one this garden salsa pepper also developed very nice branching and and filled out as well so yeah this was probably out of all the varieties by a mile the heaviest producer yeah um there was like three plants and there was I'm getting bagfuls and bagfuls and bagfuls. It was really nice. And you're giving them away. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Jason's neighbors really love him. Um, so that's great too. So um, with that, you're pulling out the the plants, really shaking off the root system so the soil goes back into your bed. Obviously, you don't want to pull yep. all of that soil out that you've you've added to your beds. And then um, the next thing we do is just go back through and really kind of dig out the weed. Yep. So I had a um, forked weeder that I was kind of popping things out. Mm -hmm. Jason, you had your trowel, yep. your um, hoe actually, handheld hoe. So he was pulling out the weeds as best as possible. We were trying to clean out that bed, clear out that bed. Benefits of a raised bed garden, you know, those weeds, even though they were very minimal, yeah. um, they, they came out really fast, out easy. real easy. Yeah. Um, so there were just a couple things that kind of rooted in there, but it's very, very easy to weed in a raised garden. Very much so. Um, so that's really nice too. So we cleaned that all out, gardens cleaned out, and then the next thing we did is we did the soil test. Um, so <laughs> there's a lot of soil testers out there. There's, um, you know, uh, pH, um, actual spike soil testers, and um, they're available at your local garden center at Petites. Yep. And then um, what we did, the key is you want to use distilled water. Um, so you take a little bit of your soil, the directions say about four inches deep, take a little bit of soil, fill up the bottom of that vial, go ahead and put the powder from the two green capsules, you'll see that as well, and then go ahead and fill it up to the top line with distilled water. Mm -hmm. Shake it up and then just wait and then Jason was pretty surprised with our results. I was surprised. It was extremely <laughs> alkaline. Yes. Um, it, it was dark, 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 dark green, which is um, very high pH. Yeah, so so um, your pH, um, when you're growing in the garden bed, your pH, neutral pH is 7.0, um, which is fine. Most of your veggies can really tolerate a, a slight acidity, so let's say six and a half to seven is, is pretty That's decent. That's about their sweet spot. Yeah, but when you get above seven and we move into 8.0, because that's kind of what we were looking at, Yeah. 
we have got to do some amending. So that's the next thing that you want to do after that soil pH test is find out, you know, really what you want to do. And mm -hmm. then if you're alkaline, then you want to add acidic amendments to kind of bring that pH level down. So first thing you added. So you can, if you get it at your local garden center, PTDs carries it as well. Soil acidifier is the quick and easy way to go. Um, I did not have that, so I used sphagnum peat moss. Mm -hmm. um, you can get it in big bales, little bales. Uh, I added a bale of that. That is a natural acidifier. Um, it doesn't work as fast, so it's more of a long term, but since we're putting it to bed anyway, um, it's got most of the winter to do what it needs to do. Right. So um, acidic, natural acidic soil amendment, sweet peat, or, sorry, not sweet peat, sphagnum peat moss. Yep. Sweet peat is the opposite. Sweet peat actually will give you a little bit of sweetened soil. So it'll make you more basic. Okay. Um, so just remember that sphagnum peat moss for acid, sweet peat for a little bit more basic pH. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing we did was... We added soil perfector. Yeah. So this bed was reasonably soft to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, we did it at a half rate. Mm -hmm. The soil perfector is a one-time amendment to your soils. So what it does is it adds aeration. The little granules will actually capture and hold on to moisture. So it gives you just a little bit of forgiveness. Um, but it really helps to loosen the soil so it prevents it from compacting and getting very um, very hard. Right, and if you listen to Angelo Petiti on the radio, he talks about clay buster. That is That's a spoma soil, soil perfector, right, exactly. So um, it does, it really breaks up clay soil, but it also helps uh, amend sandy soil, and it really helps just keep your soil light, workable, well-draining, so we added that next. Yep. And the rate, we went a half rate, because this soil is actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, so we added two bags. It's usually about, um, coverage about 12 square feet per bag, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing. So I wanted to top off the beds. Like with any container, your raised beds are essentially a giant flower pot. Mm -hmm. um, over the course of time, they do settle. Right. So what I wanted to do is just kind of top it off. Um, I actually used Espoma, the organic potting soil. Um, I try as hard as I can to go as clean as possible, meaning no synthetics or chemicals. Um, the organic potting soil I like, A, because it has beneficial goodies for the soil, but it's really light. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps the soil from compacting and getting very hard. And it also really just makes a very, very nice base to, uh, to start growing in. Right, so um, at the beginning of the series, Jason had two different types of soils in his beds. One was a mixture, like a conglomeration of all different types of bagged materials, potting mixes, um, planting, planting mixes, mix. sweet peat, peat, um, moss. peat moss, all those types of things. And he really felt overall that you had a better growing experience in those beds with all of the, the mixture yeah. um, versus bringing in like a raised bed mix. The raised bed mix that I brought in was very, very compacted. It was almost like a sandy clay mixture. Um, I use that for my main tomato bed, uh, the, the three sections of it. Um, at the end of the season, when I cleaned those out and rototill, it was extremely dense. It was very hard. The plants that I actually pull out, the root system was very, very small. Very small. Yeah. Compared to the other stuff, which was very loose, I had, you know, three foot long roots on my tomato plants. The plants produced better. They just, they lasted longer, right. they seemed to be healthier. So right. I had to reamend that one with, you know, potting soil in particular, um, again, the soil perfector to really get it loosened up um, just so that it's, it's not it's not as hard as it was. Sure, and he lovingly called that the concrete bed. Yeah, um, yes. So it needed it. Obviously yeah. it needed some amending and so forth. So he did that as well. So again, fall is a great time to work on your soil and soil preparation is always key to having your plants grow well for you. Yep. And so adding these amendments at this time of year they break down real nice and slowly over the winter and then come spring, you're ready to start digging and turning yep. and planting. You are ready to go. Mm -hmm. So then after that, you know, we've obviously uh, you rake down the soil and everything was nice and flat. And then what did we do? We did a light sowing of winter wheat. Yes. Um, it's a great amendment. It kind of 
especially if you have imbalances in your three basic numbers for your fertilizing, it's a great way to kind of balance all of those out. In addition, it adds great beneficial matter organically back into the soil. So it acts as a great cover crop. It crowds out the weeds, so it um, reduces that or almost eliminates that. Right. Come the springtime when you get ready to start your bed, mow that sucker right down, leave everything in there, and then just rototill it in really well into your beds, and it really loosens up the soil even more, um, and it adds a great amendment to it. Yeah, so winter wheat, we would highly recommend. It does not take a lot of winter wheat, kid no. you not. So we, have a, we offer it in one pound bags, and that literally covers 500 feet. So one pound would cover Jason's entire, entire raised bed area. Um, so again, be very ginger when you're um, seeding and you'll see Jason um, just <laughs> using about, oh, an ounce and a half, maybe a couple ounces to really kind of cover this one bed here. Um, and really you're sowing that in September or October mm -hmm. after you get done cleaning out your garden bed. So mm -hmm. it's a great, um, what we call green manure, yep. um, organic amendment. And mm -hmm. so um, hopefully we can come out in the spring and kind of see how you turn the winter wheat in and all those kind of things too. The other bed, we decided to try and kind of do a comparison mm -hmm. with Preem to yep. see how well it kept the weeds out. Mm -hmm. So um, further down, Jason applied Preem there. Yep, and that acts as, um, it acts as a barrier. So once you put it down, do not touch the bed. Just right. leave it, <laughs> let it, don't, you don't have to rake it in, you don't have to spread it out. Add a nice sprinkle to the top of your soil. Right and let it do its magic. Any seeds, uh, weed, or actually otherwise, good note, um, won't germinate. And it gives you roughly three-ish months worth of coverage. Yeah, so we're gonna do that kind of winter wheat preen versus preen test <laughs> to see how it goes. So we'll, we'll hopefully show you that in the springtime as well. Um, that's basically it guys, you know, yep. putting the garden to bed, um, you'll see us go through the steps here, um, but it, it actually went pretty quickly for us. Yep. It took us about a half an hour um, working on it, um, spreading everything out, and um, that's basically it. Yeah. Right? Okay, yep. so enjoy. Thanks.